Hey guys, Justin Bryant here from SelfMadeSuccess.com and in this video I want to show you some of the best website optimization tips and tricks that you can use to get more sales and get more traffic and just better optimize your site overall. So the first thing I want to cover here is your home page. Your home page obviously is extremely important. That's where most people are going to start when they uh, look up your brand and for instance I'm on Yahoo's homepage right now we all know Yahoo but the thing about Yahoo is their homepage is not really optimized very well and the reason for that is there's too much clutter there's too much stuff all over this page as you can see there's just way too many options there's a menu up at the top with Flickr and Tumblr and answers and all that stuff there's another menu here TV style, beauty, mail, news. There's all these news posts in the middle. There's all this stuff trending and ads and mail and all that over here. And then their main search bar is right here, which is pretty much what they're known for is their search. So there's just way too many options, way too many things going on on the same page. And if you look in contrast to Google, which is the number one site in the world, look how simple it is. This is the most successful website in the entire world in terms of traffic and their home page basically has nothing on it it's just one little bar here and a couple of menu items where they expect you to just use their search bar because that's what you're usually there to do on Google so they make it easy for you the thing about Yahoo is they do a very good job with their news uh, their news articles because they really capture attention but other than that the, the, you don't even look at their search bar when you come to this page because you're just all over the place and you get overwhelmed and can't figure out what where to even start when you get to Yahoo so don't have too much clutter on your home page keep it simple keep it more like Google's where you have one main thing that you want people to do whether it's search something whether it's to use a tool whether it's to look at your latest blog post or whatever and try not to overcomplicate things like Yahoo and the next thing is you want to design your blog post pages very well to keep the focus on the content in the middle of the page the thing about blogging is it's changing now through the design of you know having a sidebar and not having a sidebar and the new trend in the top sales and marketing sites are they're getting rid of sidebars so if you notice I'm on medium.com and they don't even have a sidebar over here they just have their content they have an image up there they have a con they have their content from the post in the very middle and the thing about that is it's very clean it's very easy to keep focused on the content and you don't have to you know it's not hard for you to read from side to side it's very user friendly the thing about having a sidebar is it can distract the reader from the content and they don't know what to look at first the sidebar the content and a lot of times you'll see too many things in the sidebar you'll see ads you'll see the latest posts you'll see most popular posts you'll see a search bar uh, you'll see a place where they can opt in and enter their email you, you can't just have all this stuff and expect people to take any action because there's just too much for them to think about and eventually they get overwhelmed and leave people need focus they need to you know their attention spans are not very high and um, you need to remember that with your blog post so keep your stuff centered there are themes for that now you can get a develop a code person to do this for you or do it yourself whatever but keep your content in the middle of the page so it's optimized for user focus and it helps um, with the user experience going from desktop to mobile because mobile is taking over now and you won't you can't even see the sidebar on mobile devices anyway so there's really no point in having a sidebar anymore at all and next is you want to have multiple opt-in spots okay so I'm not saying you want to have a lot of different types of offers on the same page I'm saying you need to have the same offer in multiple places so on digital marketer they have a few different ways 
that they collect emails and it's on the same page. You'll notice they don't even use a sidebar anymore um, but they get opt-ins from about four main ways. They get people that can opt in here before the post they can opt in at the end of the post. Sometimes they have one in the middle of the post if it's a long post where they can opt in. They can opt in up here in the menu and there's a pop-up that will come up if you're a new visitor that will sh that will say you can opt in in exchange for some kind of free resource. So that's four or five different ways you can opt in and it's all pretty much related content that is just there to get your email so that you, they can um, send you offers, send you the latest content that they're publishing and things like that. But all the offers are pretty much the same on these pages. Now if you go to a different page it'll have a, a few places with a different offer but we'll talk about that in a minute. The main thing you need to do is have three or four places on your page where you're offering your main offer for that page. There should be one main offer per blog post or per page and you want to have that as visible as possible. Now, the next thing you want to do for those types of um, offers is you want to make them contrast to the rest of the page. So for instance, we're on SaneBox.com here, and SaneBox is an email uh, tool for helping your productivity and helping you organize your email. But the thing is, when you come to this page, what is the first thing you see? First thing you see is this button up here. It says Get Started, and that's what they want. They made this button green for a reason, because the rest of the page is pretty much blue, except for like one exception. So they do that to bring your eyes to the main thing they want you, to, want you to see. The main thing they want you to do, the main call to action on any page should have a contrast color that's different from the rest of the page. So it really pops, it really brings your eyes to it right away and it makes people see the main thing you want them to do. So use if your if your page is mostly blue and white and things like that, use consumer psychology use contrast of a different colored button like green or yellow and bring their eyes straight to that where you can get more opt-ins and more sales or if your page is black and white you might use a red one so just uh, play around with that play around with the button colors and things like that just make sure it's a different color from the rest of the page and next you want to use um, you want to use trust. You want to build trust with these sites with these um, with your new visitors. You want to build trust and you want to show them that you're a legitimate company, you're, uh, you get good clients and you can be uh, trusted by them and they, you are credible. So right now I'm on kissmetrics.com on their home page and as you can see one of the things that they have here that's very easy to spot is some of the c big companies that use their service so they do this to show that hey these big companies that are really well known trust us and so you can too so big companies that use your service or product is a really great way to build trust and build a good first impression another way to do that is if you're on more of a personal blog you can do what Neil Patel does, who's offer the he's also the co-founder of Kissmetrics. But you can go to Quick Sprout and see how Neil Patel has his face everywhere and his about page on pretty much every blog post. So you can see a picture of Neil Patel, you get to see the person writing the post who owns the website, and you get to read a little bit about him here um, without even having to read his content or anything first. So he makes it very easy for you to find out more about him and to learn that you can trust him and that he knows what he's doing because he lists some of his achievements and things like that. So that's just a great way to build trust, credibility, and get your uh, customers to see that you know what you're doing. And another thing you want to do is leverage your social media buttons okay so someone who does a really good job of this is Jeff Bolas at jeffbolas.com 
I would recommend you go to his site and check out how he does social media because he does a great job with social media marketing and you'll notice that he has some social media follow buttons up here and that's so you can go follow him on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus and um, it makes it easy to see his content and see what's going on by just following him there so he makes it real easy for people to find him and he also has share buttons on each blog post you can't see them right now but they're on the far left side of the page and it allows you to share his stuff on your profiles so other people can go to his site and build traffic so if you want to know how to use social media buttons the right way whether it's share buttons or follow buttons the best thing to do is follow what Jeff Bolas does because he really knows a lot about that uh, another thing you want to do is make sure your website is very fast okay so the speed of your website is incredibly important because it helps with your rankings it helps reduce your bounce rate on your site and it keeps people on your page longer and the longer people are on your website the more likely they are to become customers to become uh, potential clients or leads and the better it looks towards Google so it helps your rankings so to test your site and see how fast it actually is you can go to tools.pingdom.com and you can test your website you just put the URL in this box choose where you want to test from and then start the test and if your site loads in um, if it loads slower than about two seconds I would work on optimizing your site either hiring somebody or doing it yourself to make it faster just so you get better rankings and you never lose potential customers and uh, Pingdom will tell you what you need to work on what your sites doing well it'll tell you how fast it loaded and it'll tell you it'll break everything down to each component for you so you can see what you need to fix uh, another thing you want to do is use visuals so visuals are incredibly important for showing search engines that you have quality content it's always it's also very important for showing them that um, you care about user friendliness so uh, one site that does this really well is Backlinko another one is Quick Sprout which we were on earlier and I'll get back to that but Backlinko is run by Brian Dean and Brian Dean is one of the better SEO bloggers out there he's very good at ranking things in uh, search engines and you'll notice that he lists um, images as a ranking factor but he also uses them himself so he's not just saying that he uses a lot of images in his posts and he does that for a few reasons to break up the content so it's not just all solid words he does that because you know we process images much faster so it's easy for us to learn the information if there are a lot of visuals and also images just help them rank better and they make the post look better so Google sees images all over your post they're gonna think yes this guy spends more time on his site he spends a lot of time trying to create quality content and we give him a little more ranking juice and it helps the user because you can process videos and images faster. I'm not just talking about images, but you should use videos as well. And you'll notice he uses videos on his uh, blog posts. So use videos and images in pretty much all your pages. Even if it's a squeeze page where you're just trying to collect a lead from an ad or something, have a video in the middle of the page and then a place where they can opt in or have an image showing them what they're going to get you know and then a description and then a place for them to opt in so just always be using images and videos where you can uh, another thing you want to do is use targeted lead magnets so um, targeted lead magnets are let's say we go to digital marketer and let's say they had a offer up here that said you know download our blog post ideas let's say they had one here it said um, learn how to do social media marketing and let's say they had one down here that said um, get uh, five templates for uh, email conversions or something like that so they have all these different articles on the same page 
Some people are going to try and opt into all of them so they can get as much free stuff as possible. Some of them are just going to leave and you're probably not going to optimize your site very well. You're probably going to lose sales because of this because you need to have um, you need to have consistency on your page. You need to you, you only know what these people are reading on the page so you need to capitalize on what it is people are there for. So if they're on a blog post about Facebook ads you don't know anything about them necessarily except you do know that they're interested in Facebook advertising. So they're probably interested in creating their own Facebook ads. So you would have a lead magnet or some kind of offer on here that says how to build um, profitable Facebook ads. So for instance they have a offer right here where they give a webinar and where they teach that. So it's very congruent to the page. So your lead offers should always be extremely congruent to the page. You, should, you shouldn't have just one size fits all on your entire website. You should go by blog category or even per blog post on your um, lead offers just so you get more targeted leads. You know exactly what they're looking for and it helps you get more sales. And last but not least, you you want to keep your um, you want to keep your menu very short and sweet. The menu is um, it's important because you want to just keep things very simple. Okay, you want to keep it to where they don't have too many options. They don't have too many uh, things to consider. You don't want to waste time with um, menu items that really don't matter. Okay, so for instance, Backlinko just has home, about, contact, proven SEO tips. And really, he can make this even less. He really doesn't need to have a home one. Um, a lot of these sites don't have a home uh, tab. Some of them do, some of them don't. For instance, Neil Patel doesn't have that. Um, Kiss Metrics doesn't. Because usually, when you click on the logo of the site that goes back to the home page. Um, so you really don't need that. The contact area, it kind of depends on what kind of site you are. If you're doing consulting or something like that, then you want to be contacted. If you sell in person, like a local business, you want to have a contact item up there in your menu, but otherwise you might not need that up there. The main thing you want to have is like your about page and a place for them to um, opt in or become a lead so they can learn more about you and they can see what you have to offer that's the main things you want to have in your menu just keep it simple don't have too many things up there where they have too many um, choices so that's about it for this video as far as optimizing your website hope it helps and if it if you think it does help please like and subscribe so I can bring you more great uh, videos like this to help you uh, build a better website and get more sales and if you want to let me know some things I may have left out or that you want to add to the video or if you just want to let me know what you thought about the video you can go to uh, the bottom of the page and leave a comment I would love to hear from you and if you want to contact me directly get more in-depth blog posts on this subject or get some resources and uh, free tools or really in-depth articles and uh, courses, you can go to selfmadesuccess.com. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.